Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. I can't believe I'm saying this, but looking outside, we can tell that fall has started. All the leaves are starting to change color and fall to the ground. The temperatures are starting to drop as well. Everyone's starting to bundle up a little warmer. And like I said, seeing everything that's going on with all these changes, I still can't believe that we're already in the month of October. This past weekend, we started our walk through drama called Judgment House. And if God wills us the days to live, possibly in the near future, we're gonna start hearing messages about the birth of Jesus Christ. And I know I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself, but my point is, is that time is flying by and we never know when God is gonna take us from here. So our job as Christians on this earth is to spread the gospel to other people while we still have the time. Today I'd like to share a little message that God has put on my heart and it's something that I've stumbled upon these past few weeks and that is forgiveness. It's so easy to say it's okay when someone asks for forgiveness but not truly forgiving them in our hearts. Maybe when two people come to a conflict or something like that, either one or both of the people end up leaving the conversation holding a grudge on the other. Today I'd like to bring our attention to Matthew chapter 18 and we're gonna read verses 21 to 35. And it says, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times could my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus said to him, but 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began to settle accounts, one who owed 10,000 talents was brought before him. Since he had no way to pay it back, his master commanded he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. At this time, the slave fell down before him and said, be patient with me and I'll repay you everything. Then the master said to the master of the slave had compassion, released him and forgave him the loan. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, started choking him and said, pay what you owe. At this, the fellow slave fell down and began begging him. Be patient with me, I will pay you back but he wasn't willing. On the contrary, he went and threw him into prison until he could pay what was owed. When the other slaves saw what had taken place, they were deeply distressed and went and reported to their master everything that had happened. Then after he had summoned him, his master said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have also had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And the master got angry and handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay everything that was owed. So my heavenly father will also do to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from his heart. So I know that that was a little bit of reading, but this passage that we just read is a great warning for us Christians to show us why forgiveness is important. From the very start of the passage that we just read, we can see the importance of forgiveness. And I know I'm not alone when I say it's hard to forgive someone truly from the heart when they do something that upsets us. And I'm not talking about when someone accidentally bumps into us, but maybe when someone is talking bad behind our backs or maybe something even more serious. Forgiving them once is hard enough, but Jesus Christ tells us from the very start of this passage that we have to keep on forgiving the person no matter how much they might upset us. And I'm a pretty visual person, so stories are a great way for me to understand the message clearly. And in this passage, in this parable, it is clear to see the message that is portrayed of forgiveness. The scene starts with a servant that owes a lot of money to his master. And out of curiosity, I just wanted to see how much 10,000 talents was in today's money. And I was pretty shocked when I saw how much it would be. In today's money, 10,000 talents is about $3.5 billion. That's quite a bit of money, even for someone that is wealthy. He owed all that debt, but he wanted to pay it back, but I'm pretty sure that he wouldn't have been able to, and the master knew that as well. So he forgave him all of his debt. 
then going on, we see the man coming back to his own place and he ran into his servant that owed him 100 denarii, or in today's money, about $332. But the man didn't forgive him his debt, but instead forced the servant to pay. And since he didn't, he, for, he pushed him into jail until he could pay it all back. Once the, master, once the man's master heard of this, he immediately reinstated all of the debt to the man. So where do we as Christians come into this and why is this important to us? Us as believers in Christ, we're supposed to forgive others their trespasses or wrongdoings as we were forgiven. Looking at my life alone, I can definitely say that I have sinned quite a bit. I was in need and still am in need of forgiveness. But by the sacrifice that was made by Jesus Christ, we were granted that forgiveness that we needed, but only if we choose to accept him. In the parable that we read, God is that master that we come to whenever, when, whenever we're desperate and in need of forgiveness. And even though God hates sin, he still loves us to the point that he's willing us to forgive us for it. This past week, I was listening to a sermon and the pastor that I was listening to made a very interesting point. And it was about the Lord's Prayer. And I'm pretty sure all of us know this prayer. We've all prayed it when we were younger and then we, even when we grew older. We've prayed it in Sunday school by ourselves and even as a whole church. But the thing that I like most about this prayer is the meaning behind it and the power that it has. And I'd like for us to briefly read it and it's found in Matthew chapter six and it's verses nine through 13. And it says, so this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your kingdom will come, that you, what you want will be done here on earth, the same as in heaven. Give us the food that we need for today. Forgive our sins just as we have forgiven those who did wrong to us. Don't let us be tempted, but save us from the evil one. A lot of the times I notice myself praying this prayer for the sole purpose of just to get through it. And I've rarely directed my attention to the meaning behind it. But the part that the pastor brought up that caught my attention was verse 12. It says, forgive our sins just as we have forgiven those who did wrong to us. So what does this mean? Looking at it literally, the way that we forgive others is the way that we're asking God to forgive us. When we forgive others their trespasses, God forgives us. But if someone messes up when we don't forgive them their wrongdoings, we're pretty much asking God to forgive us the same way, which means for him to not forgive. God hates sin, but we're all imperfect people that mess up. Even though we have so much sin, God still loves us and is just to forgive us no matter what we do. Yes, what was done may leave a scar in our lives and it may seem hard for us in the moment to deal with, but because of our sin, Jesus' body was covered in scars by the nails and the cuts that he endured. We must forgive because we first were forgiven. And with that, I'd like for us to stand and end off in prayer. Amen.